Our email inboxes probably provide the most time-consuming busy work of the 21st century. Most of us have several email accounts and get dozens, if not hundreds, of emails every day. If you organize your workday according to your emails, you'll always be busy but you rarely get anything done that really moves the needle. But that's not the only problem. Since we get so many new messages every day, our email accounts fill up quickly with so much email clutter that really bothers us because it looks like there's so much to do. So is there a better way to deal with it? Yes, there is. After looking at those 6,154 emails sitting in my five email accounts, plus probably about 3,000 in my promotions tab, I decided something needs to change ASAP. So I found a system that will help you get your inbox to zero in no time, even if you've had way more emails than me. So let's get started. As a first step, you need to change your mindset about email. Most of us use our emails as our to-do list and I've totally been, been guilty of that as well. The problem is this is highly reactive and also very inefficient. You're just jumping from one thing to the next, they're mostly totally unrelated and you feel really busy getting all this work done while you totally lose sight of the the things that really move the needle, that should be top priority. So what often happens is you go to work and first thing in the morning is you check your emails. After the initial overwhelm has worn off, you start working through those emails and by the time it's lunch, you might have only just worked through your emails and that's it. And then after lunch, you're maybe a bit tired, you're not really at your highest productivity and then you still have that huge project sitting um, on your to-do list, which is actually top priority. But then by three o'clock, you haven't even looked at that. And that causes a lot of stress because it means you have to work overtime in order to get your top priorities done that you should have actually taken uh, up first thing in the morning and then dealt with email later on. So what I want you to do is think as email as a messaging app. It's really just a means of communication. You get messages and then at some point in the day you'll reply to them. What it is not is your to-do list and your top priority. Step two, block at least two hours to go through your emails. Okay, so now that your mindset is in place, let's go to the actual steps that you'll need to get to Inbox, inbox Zero ASAP. I highly recommend to start by blocking off two hours that you'll only use to work through your emails. It might be that you'll be done faster, it took me about one and a half hours, and if you have way more than 10,000 emails and maybe multiple more than five accounts it might take you longer so if that's the case don't worry just get started with those two hours and use it as focus work don't get interrupted by anything else just work on those emails and if you're not done then determine another time when you'll continue with that now if you're thinking oh my god i don't have an extra two hours where should i take them from I agree, it's a little time commitment now, but you'll reap the benefits multiple folds. You'll probably save five hours every week simply by being organized in your email inbox. So take this time away from watching TV or doing some busy work, focus on it now and you'll be rewarded later on. Step three, create new folders. Okay, now it's time to start organizing. So you already have a bunch of folders in your email program, such as inbox, sent items, drafts, spam, and so on. And now it's time to create a few more so that you can have your email inbox system in place. I recommend to start with three new folders to make it as simple as possible and not get overwhelmed. The first one is dealt with or done or whatever you wanna call it. And these are all emails that don't need any action. So they've either been treated or they're just information and you don't need it anymore. And instead of deleting them, just put it in that other folder. So that still allows you to have the search function. And this way you can also avoid overthinking whether you should keep the email or not. So just put all of them in the dealt with folder and you can still access them. The second folder that I recommend is what I call need action. And this is for all emails that still need some kind of action that takes longer than three minutes. So we'll get to that in a minute. So all emails that need some kind of action on your part go into that folder. And then the third folder that I recommend is information. So this is for emails that contain information that you need to access regularly, such as instructions for a certain system. Now, depending on your business or your job, you might wanna have many more folders and that's completely fine. So you can organize it as you want, 
but just make, make sure to keep it to the essentials and not create another 20 folders because this will create another bunch of overwhelm and will not help you get organized. So keep it as simple as possible. I would really encourage you to stay under six new folders. So make that the max and then Whenever you've dealt with it with an email, just put it in the dealt with folder unless it's something you really need to access like every week or on a regular basis. Otherwise, put it there. That's it. Step four, start with the highlighted emails. Now it's time to actually go through your messages. If you've previously marked important emails that needed some kind of action or that were important for some other reasons, then start with those and go through those highlighted emails first. Then figure out if they actually still need some kind of action, which means they go in the need action folder or whether you've already dealt with it, which means they go into the dealt with folder or whether it's some information that you need to access regularly and then they go into the information folder. Now for me personally, I realized that almost all my emails that were older than four weeks didn't need any more action or weren't important. So I skipped this step and went straight to step five. So step five is to move all your emails that are older than four weeks straight away to the dealt with folder. Now, don't forget, just do it. You'll still have those emails. You can still use them or find them with the search function. But have you ever really had an email that was lingering in your email inbox for longer than four weeks? And then all of a sudden you thought, all oh, right, I'll deal with that now. Probably not. So anything that's older than four weeks is not necessary to look at anymore. If the sender really needs your reply, they'll get back to you anyway. So don't worry about that. Step six, go through your newer emails and put them in their respective folders. Now for the emails that are newer than four weeks, it's worth to, to actually take a look at them. So most of them probably don't need any more action. So put them in the dealt with folder and then look at the others and put them either in the information folder or in the need action folder. Don't worry about what you're going to do with the need action emails for now. So just put them in the other folder and we'll get to that in a minute. Step seven, unsubscribe and turn off alerts. Chances are that you're subscribed to a number of newsletters and that you get a bunch of social media alerts. As I've mentioned before, I think I've had about 3000 messages in my promotions and social media tab. And that was just mostly alerts and notifications that I never even looked at. So get rid of that clutter now, or at least begin with it. So what I've done actually is that I've only looked at the top few emails that were of a promotional kind and unsubscribed. And what I'll do from now on is that every time I get such an email, I just quickly unsubscribe on the go so that I don't have to think about if I've already unsubscribed from that one or not and do everything twice, three times. So just start with a bunch of emails and then do the rest on the go. If you still have a few newsletters that you'd like to keep, make sure to label them so that they get immediately transferred into that respective folder. So if you'd like to label messages, go to a message of a sender that you'd like to filter, then go through to the three dots on the right, click filter a message like this. So in this window, you can leave everything as is and click create filter. And then in this window, you want to click skip inbox because otherwise you'll still have it in the inbox. So you want to skip that and then also click apply the label. And here you're going to choose the label. So let's say in my case, I want to put it in coaching inspo. And then you click create filter and that's it. From now on, these kind, these messages from this sender will automatically come in, in this folder that you've just determined. Keep in mind that this is only for future messages or emails and the emails that have come in until this point will not be filtered according to the filter that you've determined now. So you have to do that by hand. This is only for future messages coming in. Step eight is to delete junk emails or emails that you definitely don't need. Now, this is a quick step and theoretically you can just skip it and you could move all the emails that you don't need in the dealt with folder. But if you want to be really well organized and really go through your stuff, then you could theoretically go through your into your promotions tab and just delete all of that. So it's just gone. 
Don't overthink this step. If you're not sure, put all in the download folder. Step nine is to create templates. Okay, so by now you should be at inbox zero, which is awesome, yay! Well done. So now it's time to set up a system that works in a efficient and effective way so that you can keep your inbox at zero every single day. Start with creating templates for responses that are really similar or that are the same and that you need on a regular basis. So if nothing comes to mind right now, that's completely fine. Continue your work as normal. And then once you see that you've just sent the very similar or exact same email for the third time within a week, just create a template and save it as a signature or as a draft or as a Word document, just something that you can access quickly. Step 10 is to only check your emails at preset times during the day. Having your inbox at zero is a wonderful first step, but it will only really help you if you manage to get off that email rat race and stop being on all the time. So what I'd encourage you to do is to have certain blocks in your calendar. I love calendar blocking and my calendar looks pretty much all like this and is all color coded, which is wonderful to have an organized day. So even if you don't use calendar blocking, I encourage you to still use blocks for your emails. And the best is to only check it two, twice or three times a day, but maximum five times. So if you're just starting, start with five times and the only important thing is that it's not, it can't be the first thing in the morning. So if you start working at nine, maybe have the first block at 10. So during this first hour, you can focus on really important tasks, something that has high priority. And then once this is done at 10, you get half an hour where you can go through your emails and put them in the respective folders. Step 11 is to use the three minute rule. So while going through your emails during those blocks, so ideally two to three times a day, a 30 minute block, while you do that, apply the three minute rule. This means that if you can deal with this email and if you can reply to it within three minutes, then do it right away. There's no point in delaying it or in putting it off because it takes you more time to read through it and think about an answer and then decide, oh no, wait, that's, I can't do that right now even though it only takes me a minute. And then you go to something else and come back and your mind is totally somewhere else. So you see where I'm going with this. If it's a short thing, reply to right now and then put it into the dealt with folder. If it's something that takes longer than three minutes, then put it in the dealt with folder and come back to it later as I'll explain, explain in the next step. And step 12 is to determine when you'll get to those need action emails. Now this last step is actually a really important one. So make sure not to skip it because if you just put your emails that need some kind of action in another folder and then forget about them, that's really dangerous and can cause some extra stress or anxiety, which is definitely not what you need. Instead, you have two options, either block off certain times during the day. Well, you'll just go, where you'll just go through those need action emails, no matter what's in there. So that could be one hour per day or two longer blocks during the week. Or the second option is to determine what kind of project or client it belongs to. And let's say you work with a bunch of clients and you get two emails from two different clients and you'll work for on client one on Tuesday afternoon and on client B on Wednesday afternoon, then you can just put it in your to-do list for this respective client and you'll work on it during this block. If you're not sure which option works better for you, just try each out for a week and then decide. Okay, so I've got one last bonus tip for, for you and that is to install an automated reply. Your new email system will take a whole lot of stress off your plate, trust me. However, it also means that the sender might have to wait a little longer for a reply. This is absolutely fine and normal and rarely anyone expects to get an answer within 10 minutes. But if you feel uncomfortable with it, there is another solution. Just install an automated reply that lets the sender know that you've received your, their email and that you'll be happy to get back to them within a certain time frame. So for instance, 24 or 48 hours, 
or whatever feels comfortable to you. Then you can also add a phone number for emergencies, which will rarely ever happen, but you can still do that to have that peace of mind. And if it sometimes takes you much longer to get a really well thought out reply, then I would highly recommend you to have a specific template that lets the sender know that you've received their email and where you can tell them within what kind of time frame they can expect an answer. Okay, so now you know exactly how you can get to inbox zero and how to keep it that way. If you'd like to boost your productivity during those blocks that I've mentioned before, make sure to download my free Pomodoro worksheet linked in the description down below. That will help you boost your productivity for sure. I'm curious, how many emails are sitting in your inbox right now? Is it even more than I had or do you have less? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, hit the like button, share with your friends and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.